Okay, today we're going to talk about 5-4, which is the mid-segment triangle theorem. So to start things off, obviously we must know what a mid-segment of a triangle is. The mid-segment of a triangle is a segment that joins the midpoints of two sides of a triangle. Here we have a triangle A, B, C, and we're going to look for the mid uh, for a mid-segment of a triangle. Um, again, the mid-segment is, it joins the midpoints. So what we're going to do is go ahead and just look for some midpoints right now. If we're looking at the midpoint of AC, uh, it appears it would be about right here. And we can denote that by our congruent tick marks. And of BC would be about right here. Again, congruent tick marks. And lastly, of AB would be about right here. Let's label these points. Uh, let's go ahead and just label them X, Y, and Z. And now uh, we have midpoints, but uh, for our mid-segment, we need a segment that joins the midpoints. So let's go ahead and just draw some segments in. Um, how about the segment X, Y, Z, Y, and X, Z. Now if we were to actually label um, the name, you know, name these mid-segments of our triangle, we see we have got XY, and so it would just simply be called segment XY. Uh, also we have YZ, and lastly XZ. Uh, it, I think it goes without saying then is that we have one, two, three. Every triangle has three mid-segments, and in fact, these mid-segments form a triangle by themselves. This triangle has a special name, and it's called the mid-segment triangle. And so similar to how we labeled our mid-segments, if we labeled this mid-segment triangle, it's simply triangle X, Y, Z. We do have a theorem that deals with uh, the triangle mid-segments, and it's called the triangle mid-segment theorem. Clever name. Uh, what this theorem says is that a mid-segment of a triangle is parallel to a side of the triangle, and its length is half the length of that parallel side. So if we, we look at the exact triangle we looked at last slide, we can actually make a few relationships using this theorem. The first of which, let's talk about XY, segment XY, just to start with. Segment XY says that it's parallel to a side of the triangle. Parallel means, again, it never touches. So obviously, XY it obviously touches segment BC and it also touches segment AC. So what this means is that it is parallel to the side AB. So we can simply write that AXY is parallel to AB. In addition to this, we can also say one more thing about XY. We can say the length of XY, notice there's no bar above XY, the length of XY is equal to well, let's see, its length is half the length of that parallel side. So the length of XY is one half the length of AB. And then we could make those same relationships for all of the mid-segments. And we can do that real quickly. We can say also that YZ is parallel to segment AC, but then also the length of YZ is equal to one half of AC. And lastly, we talked about XZ is parallel to segment BC, meaning that the length of XZ is one half the length of BC. Okay, so now we've got an example uh, using the, the mid segment stuff. This one says to find the measure, there's three parts find the length of JL, the length of PM, and the measurement of. Um, angle MLK. If you see, we have a big triangle here um, with our mid-segment triangle in here. Um, also, it's very important to note that we do have the congruencies going all the way around, meaning that these points are the, mid uh, the midpoints, which means that all of these segments are mid-segments. It is important to know um, because there will be some that trick you. So anyway, let's start. Let's look at um, first part, which is part A. We want the length of JL. Okay, 
Well, let's see. We see the length of JL. And now remember, we also have all mid-segments right here. So if you th remember back to our mid-segment theorem, it says that we have a mid-segment that's going to be parallel to JL. Furthermore, it's going to be one-half the length of JL. So which mid-segment looks parallel? In my opinion, it's most definitely PN. So you can say that segment PN is going to be parallel to segment JL, but actually that's not the important part right now. What's actually important is that the length of PN is equal to one-half the length of JL, and that's directly through our theorem. Well, don't we know the length of PN, which is 36? So we can say 36 is equal to one-half of JL. And then we can just multiply by 2 to see that the length of JL is equal to 72. And now we are done with part A. Now let's go ahead and look at part B. Uh, part B says we want the length of segment PM. Again, we uh, notice that PM is a mid-segment here. And so we can jump right in and use our mid-segment theorem. Yeah, it's the same as last time. We could say that PM is going to be parallel to, in this case, it looks like segment LK. But that's not the important part. What's important is that the length of PM is going to be one-half of the length of LK. Meaning it's going to be one-half times what? Well, we know what LK is. LK is 97. So you can type that into your calculator. Type in one half times 97, and you will see it's going to be 48.5. And that is all we need to do for part B. Okay, now we're going to jump in and do the final part of this question, which is asking for the measurement of angle MLK. So uh, I've said it before, but whenever I'm looking for a measurement, I look for different measurements, in a, especially in a triangle. In this case, the only one I see is 102. Uh, but, uh, of course, I also see some mid-segments. So let's use our information about mid-segments, and maybe 102 will tie in somehow. So looking at MLK, uh, I see it's that bottom angle. So I look for segments that deal with this uh, bottom angle. And I see JL does and LK does. Now, by tie-in, I mean it touches, um, it, it's related. JK is not related to the bottom at all, and that's why, that's why I'm not looking up there. I'm looking on the sides. Now, I could go off and say, you know, segment JL is going to be parallel, because, again, we're using mid-segments, to PN. Um, but that doesn't tell me anything at all. Instead, what might be better is that instead of talking about JL, I go ahead and talk about LK. And maybe it will make more sense after I actually do it. LK is parallel to MP. And now, it wasn't the important part. This uh, parallel statement was not important in parts A and B, but it is now, actually. So we talk about LK is going to be parallel to MP. Well, if you think back, we have some rules and some theorems that we know about parallel lines. Parallel lines, different relationships with our angles. How about JMP, the angle that we know? We can say that angle JMP is going to be congruent to angle MLK. Now, how did I know that? Well, think about picking up JMP and just sliding it down. It's the exact same angle. The reason why? These are corresponding. And this is the corresponding angles theorem. So therefore, we actually now know what MLK is, and we only know this because we have parallel lines. And that's why I chose these two lines because therefore we would have congruent angles. You might also have to use alternate interior angles, don't forget about that. Alternate exterior angles, I guess to finish this off I could say that the measurement of angle MLK is equal to 102 degrees then. 
Uh, but again, you might use alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, um, corresponding as we just did. So don't forget about those relationships when dealing with parallel lines. So we have one more question um, with dealing with the mid-segments. And in this case, we want to explain why segment XY is not a mid-segment of the triangle. So we see a triangle, we see XY, and we want to talk about why is it not. It's very easy to say that it is because it looks like a mid-segment. It looks like it's cutting this guy in half. It looks like a midpoint to midpoint cutting it in half. Um, also, it's important to note, remember what these arrows mean. These arrows mean that these two lines, this top and bottom line, these are parallel lines. Well, all mid-segments are parallel, but don't forget about that word mid, or that prefix, I guess, that mid. Mid means it's in the middle, it cuts it in half. It's at the median, or at, at the midpoint. If this is 6 and this is 5, is x at the midpoint? No. So what we could say is that x, well I guess and you could say the same thing for y, x and y are not midpoints. And so I alluded to that fact in the last example. Make sure you actually do have midpoints. Um, we have 6 is not equal to 5. Uh, make sure you actually do have midpoints in your triangles, so make sure it actually is a mid-segment. Uh, that should always be a first step, because then you notice a mid-segment, so you can use the mid-segment theorem. You can't use the theorem if it's not a mid-segment. So anyway, that's all I got for today. Um, hope you guys understand mid-segments, uh, and they're not too crazy for you.